Hello, and thank you for tuning in to this week's Mayor's Update. I look forward to continuing to do these updates with you on a weekly basis, and as always, you can find them on the city's YouTube page, Facebook, social media sites, Gardner Educational TV, and the city's website. There are a lot of exciting updates I have to share with you this week, and some information I just want to get out so the public knows, and um, please feel free to share this information with all of your friends, family, relatives, and those that you know here in the city to make sure that everyone has the most up-to-date and accurate information as possible. Beginning on August 4th, Kelton Street, Stone Street, Raymond Street, and Wheeler will be um, converted into gravel roads by the DPW. The current um, status of these roads and their repair uh, are getting close to a spot where it's almost unsafe to drive vehicles over them with the amount of um, potholes wear and tear that are just on those streets. So the current plan at the DPW is to go through and pulverize the roads and turn them into gravel roads until we have the funding available to go through and pave them. Signage has been put up all throughout this area to inform the residents that this is happening. And if you have any questions on this, please contact Director Dane Arnold at the DPW down at 50 Manka Drive. Uh, we want to make sure everyone in this area has all the information that's available to them during this time. And we want to make sure we continue these discussions back and forth uh, to make sure that you remain updated as this process continues. Uh, that leads me to my next uh, line of information for you all to say that I've received a lot of questions asking why the city hasn't been out paving roads yet this year. And the answer to that is the pandemic. Uh, when the COVID-19 pandemic began, a lot of the funding that we received from the state was delayed, including our Chapter 90 funds, which is used for road repair and infrastructure upgrades. Uh, here in the city of Gardner, we use about 99% of that for road paving. Uh, and this year we were awarded about $600,000 in this funding. However, while $600,000 sounds like a lot, I do want to make it clear that it costs us a ballpark $300,000 per mile um, to pave the streets. So in reality, that only covers about two miles of pavement. Well, there is some funding in the city's budget that goes towards supplementing uh, these funds to get a little more than that. Uh, but what we end up doing is I sit down with the city engineer and the director of the DPW to prioritize where we go uh, and what roads we pave. If you have any questions on this, also please feel free to contact Director Arnold at the DPW or my office at any time. Uh, my goal is that by mid-August to early September, we'll have a paving schedule published on the city's website and social media to ensure that uh, the city and its residents understand where we'll be doing some work during the fall. Related to that uh, is questions about our work happening downtown with all of the um, construction that's been happening there over the past year. Construction in terms of digging into the grounds to replace the utility lines should actually be done within the next two to three weeks. Once that's done, they'll go through and put permanent patches over the trenches once uh, the soil underneath the pavement has settled. And then once the trenches have settled, we'll go through, mill the downtown, and uh, put the first coat of pavement on. Uh, that should be done sometime mid-fall. We'll then let that first coat sit throughout the course of the winter. And then after the snow is melted, sometime in April, we'll go through and put that top and final coat of pavement onto the streets in downtown. So this means by the start of May next year, we'll have all new sidewalks, all new streets, all new crosswalks, and all new painting throughout the downtown area to help revitalize that area on our end. All of this is being done through the capital project that has been, uh, been underway through the replacement of our utility lines and is being done outside of the Chapter 90 funding that I mentioned before. So that two miles of road actually doesn't deal with the downtown in this case. Uh, there was a couple of days this past week where we had to close the Greenwood Pool due to an electrical issue with one of the motors that we had there. Uh, one of the motors malfunctioned and we wanted to make sure that since we're dealing with water here, all of the electrical issues were dealt with safely and securely before we reopened the pool back up to the public. We apologize for any inconvenience that this may have caused um, any of you who normally frequent the pool, but do know that the pool is back open, back fully operational, and is a true resource for us here in the city for those looking to get away from the heat of summer. So please feel free to visit that pool at any time. The Splash Park is not open yet due to the restrictions that come with the pandemic, as we don't want um, individuals wearing masks to then go into a situation where they're having water sprayed 
uh, at them and causing any issues there. So the spray park remains closed, but the pool itself is still open um, for people to attend. You can contact the pool at any time if you're looking for any further information or check out the city's website, www.gardner-ma.gov. We had a very exciting announcement uh, this past week regarding our support of our local businesses. The city received $400,000 in a microenterprise assistance grant from the Commonwealth Community Development and Block Grant Funding Program. What this means is we then take this pot of money and break it up into small grants to be able to give to our local businesses who meet certain requirements as a way to help get them back on their feet after having to close for some time during the uh, pandemic restrictions. Now this is only the first step in a series of steps in an overall program that we should be taking to help revitalize our economy and bring us out from underneath this pandemic. But it's a very important first step. Our local businesses are the ones who donate to our local charities, to our sports programs, our churches, our organizations, our schools, and so much more. And when we needed them, they were there for us. And now those roles are reversed and we need to do our part to step up where they stepped up for us. Uh, this is a very exciting moment. It's actually one of the first promises I made in my campaign for this office. So I'm very proud to see that it's one of the first things we've been able to accomplish uh, since I took the oath of office just two weeks ago. Uh, for more information on this program overall and how businesses can apply for this funding, please see the city's website or contact uh, Director Beauregard or uh, Assistant Director Legros or our Economic Development Coordinator Maribel Cruz in the Community Development and Planning Office and they will be more than happy to assist you uh, navigate this process. I've been meeting with our department heads regularly uh, and we have a series of meetings scheduled over the course of the next week to finalize the city's budget proposal for the fiscal year 2021. Uh, normally a budgeting process takes three to four months from start to finish with revenue projections, meeting one-on-one -on -one with department heads to discuss their priorities and their needs, uh, going through the budget to make sure it's balanced and that we are at a healthy and stable financial situation, and then presenting it to the council for them to do their due diligence on behalf of the citizens. This is something that, again, like I said, normally takes a couple, three to four months. Uh, however, we've had to hit the ground running uh, since starting the office, and I'm very happy to see the teamwork that our department heads have been working with to make sure that we have a stable and healthy budget to present to the council by their September meeting. I did submit a 1 12th budget to the council for the month of August. This is formally known as a continuing appropriation budget. And what this means is we take last year's budget, divide that by 12, and that's our spending limit for the month of August. This is exactly what the city did for the month of July. And what the state is allowing uh, for cities and towns to do as a result of the pandemic. In fact, it's what the state is doing at their own level and they've done that for the past um, month and they just uh, approved a process of doing that again for the next three months on the state level. Uh, but we continue to work to get us into a full operating budget to be able to go forward into the next fiscal year. Uh, the last thing I want to talk about with you all today is that last evening uh, which was Wednesday, July 29th, for those of you who may be watching this on different days, the school committee met to approve and discuss the superintendent's plan for the start of the new school year. The plan that the superintendent proposed uh, begins with 10 days of professional development in which we can help work with our teachers and our educators to help prepare for the new school year given all of the situations that have been thrown at us. After those 10 days, two weeks of fully remote learning in which students are telelearning through online means um, with their teachers. And then after those two weeks going into a hybrid model in which half of the students are in the school buildings and the other half of the students are at home uh, telelearning again through uh, remote means and over the computer. Then they go back and forth where when one group is in the school, the other group is telelearning and vice versa. This is being done because when you look at the regulations that are currently in place from the state, in order for us to go back into a full in-person or starting as a hybrid as is, we'd have to rush. And I said this from the start when I met with the superintendent. 
If there's any place where we should not be rushing, it's with our school system. Our students are our future, and our teachers, staff, and educators at the schools put everything they can into making sure that those students have successful futures. And we should be doing our part to complement that work as well. Uh, if you look at the regulations as to how many people can be in a classroom at a time, the desks also need to be six feet apart due to social distancing requirements. And if that's the case, we just don't have the room in the schools to have everyone back full person straight on. So that's why we're going forward with this model to make sure that we are promoting the health, safety, and security of both our students and the staff at the schools. Um, furthermore, this also gives us a chance to see what other cities and towns are doing across the state who are starting with a full hybrid model or a back to school model, see what mistakes they may make on the end and preemptively correct those for us to again ensure that we are doing the best we can for our students. Now this was a lot of information that we shared with you today, but I'll continue to do these weekly updates with you. And if you ever have any questions about anything that was said uh, during any of these updates, please feel free to contact me at any time at 978 630-1490 or email me at mayor at gardener-ma.gov and I'll be happy to talk with you at any time. But until our next meeting, please continue to take care of yourselves and others. Watch out for your mental and physical health and well-being during these trying times and I'll see you next week. Thank you very much and have a good day.